Welcome to another episode of Next Stop Everywhere, the podcast about the Doctor, his companions, and almost anything else we can find to talk about. I am Jesse Jackson. Joining me as always is... Charles Skaggs. Yes, and tonight we are going to talk wet frocks, living with otters, PE teachers, could improve handwriting, disruptive influences... That's right. We're going to talk about the caretaker. Yay. So, Charles, I'm going to start out with um, last week we had talked about that we had not had a, in my opinion, a week episode yet. So, to me, the streak may have ended. Ooh. So, what are your thoughts? Controversy. Actually, yes, I, controversy. Controversy. Uh, actually, I kind of adored this episode. Um, awesome. It, yeah. Um, the I just thought that overall, I thought this was such a great showcase for Peter Capaldi. He was just every scene, um, just rattling off these amazing lines and just kind of, you know, really getting you, if you weren't a fan of his doctor before up till now, you probably are after that episode because um, I just thought that he just, he, he was, you know, like he's, you know, funny one minute, glib, sarcastic, um, jealous, uh, enraged, um, you name it. He covered every gamut of emotions. And uh, notice I didn't say gambit because a lot of people confuse that word. But um, yeah, I think he just covered the whole spectrum there and uh, really gave us a, a healthy taste of his doctor. Huh, interesting. I. I certainly – there's a lot to like in the episode, but I don't know if the story itself is as good as some of the other ones. Um, certainly like the uh, Clara, Danny, Doctor bits, um, I think that is as good as anything we've had. But the um, the monster, the threat, the kind of back and forth – I'm not sure if that was as good for me as some of the other stuff we've seen. No, I'm, I agree that the, the whole monster threat uh, wasn't a big deal. And, and in that sense, yes, the plot was kind of thin. But I think the whole point was the monster was secondary. I don't think it was – I mean, I think there was just – it was a whole exploration of the relationship between the Doctor, Clara, and Danny – with the monster being a secondary plot element. It's just, that's why you kind of saw it disappear for a while. And then it kind of doesn't show up again until the end of the episode, because there was just all this stuff that needed to be covered, or at least that, um, you know, Moffat and uh, writer Gareth Roberts wanted to cover. Um, no, Gareth Roberts, um, he's done a lot of very character based episodes. Um, he did the Shakespeare code. Uh, he wrote unicorn and the wasp. Planet of the Dead, The Lodger, and Closing Time. So his specialty seems to be toward these more character-driven than, uh, you know, like monster-driven episodes. And uh, I think that, that this was another excellent case of that. Okay. Um, so let's kind of talk about the episode. Um, I did like the kind of teaser, the beginning of seeing – how Clara is truly trying to have it all. You know, there's there's that joke about, or not even a joke, it's a serious concern with, um, you know, people trying to balance their home life, their work life, being a good parent, uh, trying to have time for themselves. And um, she is the ultimate, you know, stretch thin. And I loved the back and forth. I love the excuses she gave to Danny, you know, um, seaweed. Well, <laughs> I did tell you it was an unusual storm. So, um, and, um, and I did love the whole Vibra Cutters 
um, in the other jacket and the doctor, why do you have two jackets? Uh, <laughs> so a very, very funny beginning that was um, funny, sweet, but at the same time really sets the message that she's trying to have two lives. I, I totally agree with that. I think that's a great observation on your part that, um, that uh, yeah, Clara has got that. I mean, she's doing this almost like a, a three life thing that where she's like, you know, a school teacher by day. Uh, she's got her, you know, budding r- romantic relationship with Danny. And then she's hopping across time and space in the TARDIS with the doctor. So that's all kind of a lot on her plate. Um, now, granted, it's a little easier when you have a time machine that can bring you exactly back to the moment you left. But um, from a from a just, you know, a stress standpoint of like, you know, almost getting killed on a regular basis out there in the cosmos to coming back and and having to juggle this, you know, all this other stuff that, uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. And, and obviously it hit a, a breaking point in this episode. Yeah. Um... We did get the um, doctor telling her no trip today. Um, he plays I'm a man of mystery. Um, I did think it was a really funny bit of dueling snapping fingers. And for those of you who don't know, you know <laughs> Charles and I are snapping our fingers as we're recording this. Um, and then, that was that was really then. cool. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Adam's um, family riff. Yes. Um, and... So when we find out that the thing he had to do was uh, be undercover at the school, um, I absolutely adore that with all the banter, and there's so much wonderful banter between them, the bottom line is, are the kids safe? Right. You know, that's what she's worried about because she truly is a great teacher, and I think she cares about the children a great deal. Oh, I totally agree. Um, yeah, because you know when the doctor shows up, and, and Clara points this out, that you know when you show up, uh, things go horribly wrong, and people get put into danger. So yeah, it was it was great that Clara expressed that concern about her her students, and uh, and actually called the doctor on that a bit, which was nice. Yeah, it was. Um, the. Um... Do you think the doctor was deliberately giving Danny a hard time about being a PE teacher? Um, was he just had this built-in unhappiness because he's an ex-soldier? Uh, what do you think? I think that, uh, yeah, there was a lot of that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the, uh, the Obviously, the bit where where he's explaining that he used to be a soldier – that obviously triggered the doctor off because you know they and they've been setting this up all all series, the or this whole season that uh, the doctor's has issues with soldiers. So yeah, obviously this was gonna come out when when the two finally met, and then you know him calling or him the doctor calling Danny a PE teacher or just simply PE. Um, you know, seeing in his in his. My his viewpoint that soldiers are essentially like PE teachers, that they're bullies, and that you know just this is this is his first read on Danny that he's just another bully and he's not going to be good enough. So uh, he just he keeps dismissing him, calls him Dave instead of Danny, and you know just immediately sh- shrugs him off because he he thinks that uh you know he, in his mind he thinks that Clara is dating Adrian the the Matt Smith lookalike um yes which i thought was very amusing and so that he she he couldn't possibly that Danny couldn't possibly be the one that's involved with Clara yeah i thought that was really cool i did not catch the Matt Smith looks uh, until I saw it on Twitter, I did catch the bow tie, right? Which which I thought was uh, pretty silly and pretty fun. And uh, but yeah, so floppy, then, floppy hair, big chin. Yeah, and then it kind of makes it look like they're going. You know, he's just oh look, she's dating someone who looks like me. I'm so happy. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, oh, I Clara. also yes, I also love the fact. That for the first time, uh, the doctor 
in this uh, version mentions River. Yes. You know? Yeah, I thought that was I, great. I, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, he's talking about we were fighting, so I had to go live with the otters. <laughs> um, is just, was pretty funny. Yeah. You know? I, I want, I now we, we, I want to see the 12th Doctor meeting River. I think that yes. even, just to add an episode, because I know River's been so overdone um, as a plot element, but I think, we, you know, uh, that uh, River needs to come back, if only for an episode, just to kind of keep the actress's uh, streak going uh, with yes. between, you know, Tennant, Smith, and now Capaldi. Um, and I think the two would probably play brilliantly off one another. So absolutely, I would, I would, and we, of course, we'd love to see River's reaction to the Doctor's new appearance and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, yes. that, I don't think you know this season, but definitely um, series nine. Um, yeah, I think that needs to happen. So hopefully, it will. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. Um, the, um, you know, we had the Doctor kept, you know, as he is prone to do not telling the whole story uh kind of keeping things out um and we end up having the scovox blitzer mm -hmm. i think is the correct yep how to say it <laughs> say that sometimes um, fast yes and uh i said that um this week i'm gonna use problem solution destroy <laughs> and somehow in a work meeting i'm just gonna somehow work that in there you can put up on like powerpoint uh, as you know like bullet points to uh yes it's so like here's our here's our agenda for today <laughs> yes problem one um, two solution three destroy yes um i also think um it was funny the doctor uh mocking uh, Danny about, oh, I've got a swimming certificate, uh, you know, <laughs> belittling PE teachers everywhere. Right. Um, cross, cross country in the offside rule. Um, I said if it had been an American writer, it would have been the infield fly rule, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, but um, I, I, I liked, you know, going back to um the the trouble of them trying to find it i think that's part of it. my problem is you know we weren't sure what was going on we weren't sure of the villain and it seemed it at least in my case it didn't engage me uh you know i was waiting for okay well in my mind this is going to be where uh the doctor is going to find out that clara is dating danny let's skip to that part because i don't care about the other stuff right how about you I, I understand yeah because that's obviously where the meat of the episode was was um with clara you know and danny and the doctor more than you know the scovox but um yeah i just i think that uh i saw this personally i saw this as a like a, just another light-hearted episode for the most part i mean you had lots of great humorous moments um yeah it wasn't it wasn't a meaty episode it wasn't definitely wasn't scary um mm -hmm. so um we're gonna get that next week thankfully but um yeah uh that uh it was just you know just it's just another fun episode i mean you know if you look at like i said if you look at gareth roberts previous episodes like the lodger um you know and the shakespeare code they weren't really scary uh, they weren't very meaty, but they were a lot of fun. And I think this is what this episode was in that in that kind of in that kind of vein. That's the way I saw it. Uh, we okay, good, fair enough. Uh, we do get Clara admitting that she loves Danny um, a little soon, maybe. Or are you comfortable because? We aren't sure how much actual time has passed. Yeah, I think in this season, I think that's a good point. We don't know how much time it's been, uh, really, because of you know back and forth, and we don't know what. There's been so many gaps as far as episodes, you know, because with the whole idea that Clara commutes to time and space, you know, that the Doctor comes and picks mm -hmm. her up. We don't know, you know, like it could have been months, years that she's been there. We don't know. Um, okay. So yeah, it just on the base of, of six episodes, it seems a little soon, but we don't really know exactly how long they, the two have been involved. 
So until we learn a little bit more of that, I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I was too. Um, I did not hear him say "I love you" back. Yeah. Did I miss that or? No, you didn't. And that's you know that's a okay. I wonder if that's just a guy thing that okay, you love me, how sweet, and I'm not going to re- respond to that. But yeah, yeah, that. But he, to be fair, he did have a lot of issues he was dealing with at the time. Yes, he was. Um, now, if he doesn't he say says, it by the end of the season, then you got a problem. Right. Yeah, he did have the how stupid do you think I am? You know, my God, you're a space woman and he's your space dad. <laughs> I like that uh, one. That was really, really funny. That was funny. But uh, um, oh, go ahead. Do you think do you think she gave a good enough answer? Because I think it's a re- realistic answer. Why do you fly off in that box of his? And I thought she gave a good answer. How about you? Yeah, I think so. Um, Because that's basically what it boils down to is that you're going out there and you're seeing in the time and space and you're seeing all these amazing, incredible things. Because if you weren't, why would you just go out there and risk certain death on a regular basis? Yeah. So and the whole point is like, yeah, yes, there the whole traveling with a doctor is like a two edged sword. Um, on the one hand, you could see these incredible things you would never see otherwise and or go back to the past and see things that are lost forever in time. But um, and then on the flip side, there's always like, OK, well, you have to deal with Daleks and Cybermen and Centaurans and you name it on the regular basis. So and, you know, there's a good chance that every so often a companion gets killed. Whoops. So, um, yeah, there's there's that little caveat. Uh, for when you become a companion, but um, she seems to be okay with that. And I think, you know, I think in this case, uh, traveling with a doctor, the the advantages outweigh the disadvantages because they have to, they have to, otherwise why would people travel with him? Yes, I I agree. Um, So I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about Danny's assessment of the doctor. Um, He's called him an aristocrat. Mm-hmm. He's called him an officer, and at the end, he talks about he's people who make you better than you are, but also can push you to do things beyond your limits. Um, what's your thoughts on that? I think that, um, yeah, I think that was some really interesting uh, moral and ethical issues that uh, was were being covered, um, that the series is covering, because um, somebody's actually calling the doctor out on his tendency to put people in danger and to use them as his soldiers in order to defeat aliens, monsters, whatever. Um, that's always been kind of a, an issue. Um, I know that it got addressed a lot uh, in the classic series during the Seventh Doctor era, the Sylvester McCoy era with, um, with Ace because uh, McCoy's Doctor was very manipulative and used people a lot like chess pieces. And there was that kind of bit of, of a metaphor in um, The Caretaker where Claire is kind of standing on a chessboard, almost like she's a pawn on a chessboard. And mm-hmm. and I think that's that's this is carrying through that um, with Danny, um, I think there's some issues there um, that he feels towards his previous superior officers that I think he's projecting on the doctor a, a little bit. But uh, to his credit, yeah, there's there's some truth there, and there's some hard, bitter truth that yeah, okay, sometimes the doctor isn't always nice about things, and that's what makes the doctor such a compelling character because he's not just this squeaky little goody two shoes all the time, and especially this doctor, um, there's that morally gray area, and I think that uh, that that being addressed is a good thing for the series. You know, I, I totally agree. I love the fact that. Danny went from being um, the victim to the aggressor, and I that's a poor choice of words, but all of a sudden he's turning this around to the doctor and saying, oh, Time Lord, of course it is, mm-hmm. and uh, I've seen people like you, and he starts going, yes, sir, I won't call you sir, sir, am I dismissed, and he pushes the doctor so much that the doctor actually says yes. Um, he really pushed, I think, the right buttons mm-hmm. on the doctor. And and I think he, you know, I love that the doctor said, well, overall, that would, you know, 
better. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I think it was a really good thing to see uh, Danny standing his own and uh, not, you know, in, in a lot of ways, you know, Clara's father, surrogate father, is picking on him. Mm-hmm. And he had to show him that he's not going to be beaten down, that he is going to stand his own. And I, I thought that was really well done. Yeah, um, it was uncomfortable to watch at times, but that was a good thing. Yes. Um, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't the same old safe thing that we were used to as Doctor Who fans. And yeah, it kind of made yeah. you squirm in your seat a little bit uh, watching that exchange. But I think it was an important exchange. And, um, you know, as much as the doctor is judging Danny, the Danny's judging the doctor right back. And eventually there's going to have to be a meeting of the minds and there probably will be. But I know that, you know, just from, from previous companions and, and like the people like the brigadier, um, the doctor tends to respect those that push back and don't just roll over for him. Um, yeah, he'll argue and be contentious, but he will respect that more that you're, you're willing to stand up to him. And yeah. And I also, um, skipping ahead when we have parent teacher night and how they're all dreading and, uh, and we will have to spend some time talking about <laughs> Courtney Wood. Um, cause she's pretty cool. Um, you know, the, um, interaction back and forth where, uh, the monsters coming back, the doctor is coming up with a plan and, you know, Danny's like, you no, you're not like a decoy. You are a decoy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the, and Danny calling out the doctor going, what, you know, I thought you were going to have time for this. And, uh, you know, and the doctor, did they not teach you anything in stupid school? Um, and the back and forth where Danny, um, didn't do, you know, the doctor basically gave the version of, you know, the Chuck instructions or the castle instructions, stay in the car, <laughs> you know, and, and Danny didn't, he, he actually went there. He was trying to help. Uh, he does help. That's a great leap. Right. You know, in him showing the distraction, uh, I, I thought he kind of showed himself and to, to your point, the doctor respected him a little bit more um, after that. Right. Well, yeah. Um, if, if, if you, it's kind of like, remember back with, with Mickey uh, in that first season uh, back in series one in 2005, where the ninth doctor was just constantly ragging on Mickey. Um, he didn't take him in yeah. board the TARDIS. Uh, he said, you know, he told Rose, yeah, okay, you can come, but uh, he's not welcome. And then just kind of bags on him the whole season. And it's not until he regenerates into David Tennant's 10th Doctor that he actually comes to appreciate Mickey and reevaluates the relationship. And Mickey kind of steps up more to the plate and eventually becomes a companion of the 10th Doctor. So, yeah, um, you know, just he's he doesn't the Doctor doesn't suffer fools gladly. Um, right. And never has. But even when he's even when he's acting the fool, but um, that uh, Danny, obviously, you know, he's and he, and he kind of said this, that Danny, Danny observed this, actually, that the doctor is, you know, wants to make sure that he, Danny is good enough to be worthy of Clara so that whenever she leaves the TARDIS, he can protect her. And I think that's yeah, kind of what the, and po- I think the point that of this was... That's what I think the point of this was. Go ahead. I do think that's the point of the episode, and I think it's a great point. Um, I think it explains a little bit the sense of protectiveness the doctor's showing her. Um, and, you know, I am I do not have a daughter, I have a son, but I can't, I have read enough and talked to enough fathers with daughters that you always are overprotective you can be worried (laughs) yes overprotective and worried about is this a man you know or woman who's going to take care of your little girl right uh and um i thought that was very nice and even the doctor said it was a good start yeah um 
so before I go to the ending, I wanted to ask you, were you a little surprised that uh, the doctor took Courtney into the TARDIS <laughs> for a trip? No, I'm not, because the doctor always, yeah, he's he's very curmudgeonly at times, and then he may be, be like, oh, kids, uh. but he, I mean, he appreciates kids because they're, you know, they're all about the wonder and they're far more easily oppressed than adults. So he kind of relates to kids better in a weird way. Um, so yeah, he was going to take, as soon as, um, you know, like as soon as Courtney Woods explained herself as, you know, the, uh, what was it? Um, the disruptive, disruptive influence. Um, Immediately, I'm thinking back to the Seventh Doctor and Ace, his companion, because Ace was like the like the definitive disruptive influence as far as a companion. So, and those two um, had a you know just an incredible chemistry together. I mean, you had the Doctor as like you know Ace's mentor, and you know Ace, who starts off as a troublemaker, grows into a young woman. And, um, so yeah, I'm sure that, you know, just the doctor looks at Courtney and goes like, Oh, I kind of see a little bit of ACE in you maybe. Mm -hmm. And now, okay. now granted, you know, throwing up in the TARDIS, uh, may not endear her to him as much, but, um, he just kind of like sighed and shrugged and is like, Oh, you know, another spillage. So mm -hmm. no, he'll just shrug it off and take care of it. Yes. Maybe he'll press a button and it just disappears. Who knows on the TARDIS. It was a funny line that um, I may have a vacancy right after, mm -hmm. you know, she had yelled at him. And also the um, the um, talking about how, you know, Claire and him are the same age, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> they look the same, you know, and, and poor, you know, Danny is sitting there going. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was. Uh, I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um. So Clara says, "I trust them, and he's never let me down." But uh, Danny has said that you need to tell me if he's asking you to do too much. Right. And he kind of threw down the gauntlet that said, "If you don't, that ends it for us," because. I could not stand not being there for you, basically. Um, what are your thoughts there? Um, I thought that was that was kind of important in their relationship in the sense that um, Danny needs to know that Clara trusts him enough to be open and honest and is open and mm -hmm. honest with him because if, she, if he, she's just going to keep secrets from him, um, that's going to put a wall between them. And right. So and that's going to create tension. And yeah, that's probably good. It could ultimately doom their relationship. So, yeah, he needs her to be especially now that everything's out in the open. Finally, um, if she goes back to being secretive again, then you can understand why he'd want to bail on that relationship, because, you know, it's like, hey, look, we finally got everything out on the table and here you go back again, keeping secrets from me. So, yeah. um, I'm one of those types of people personally that, yeah, secrets are, are just really tough to bear in a relationship. So if you're keeping secrets from me, yeah, I'm going to have problems with you. And I could see where Danny's coming from in that regard. Um, but, uh, by the same token, he, j Clara needs to, um, you know, a appreciate Danny in that recent, in that sense, but also needs to like go, Hey, look, I'm not going to do everything for you. So it's going to be, you know, they've got some, uh, they've got some ground to cover and, and I, ho I hope this isn't like a rushed relationship into a, like a marriage because I think they have some ways to go yet. I, I agree. They do. I, I, I really think they do. Um, so any other comments uh, about the episode you need to, <laughs> we need to talk about? Um, let's see. Uh, just some minor observations. Um, like uh, I noticed that uh, this was the doctor, doctor's first major return to Coal Hill School since way back in 1988. What? Well, actually, the you know the 1988 episode "Remembrance of the Daleks" to go back to the Seventh Doctor again. Um, yeah, okay. he, yeah, he's kind of appeared in Coal Hill when he's like dropping Clara off, but he you know there hasn't been an episode set 
in Coal Hill since 1988. And that was the school that originally back in 1963, where all of this started, where um, the doctor's granddaughter, Susan, left Coal Hill. And, you know, like she here she attended Coal Hill and um, the two teachers, Ian Chesterson and Barbara Wright, um, were suspicious and followed, you know, Clara or excuse me, Susan back to uh, her grandfather's junkyard. And uh, that's where the TARDIS was, and that's where the whole adventure of Doctor Who began. So it's an, it's an important location in Doctor Who history, um, which is why it was featured in the, the Day of the Doctor recently, um, with Clara becoming a teacher there. So they, this finally gets, you know, the Doctor finally there. And actually in the in Remembrance of the Daleks, um, the doctor is actually asked about whether he's applying for the position of caretaker, ironically enough. So I'm wondering if that was deliberate to like, here we are like years later um, that uh, he finally becomes caretaker of Coal Hill School. OK, good. Anything else? Um, did notice uh, it's kind of an Easter egg, but uh, notice that Claire's uh, flat apartment number. Um, is 63, which again is another reference to 1963, I think, uh, the year that Doctor Who premiered. So I thought that was a fun little Easter egg. Um, and uh, I liked that uh, when she was referring to the Doctor showing up and looking for Boggins from space, and um, I was I just laughed at that because I'm thinking, what a great band name for a Troc band that would be. Yes. <laughs> I could just see somebody like, yes. that's it. That's our name. Boggins from space. So yeah. Right. So uh, whoever becomes Boggins from space, you know, send me a CD, but um, yes, indeed. <laughs> but, uh, and then um, I noticed that the doctor was whistling uh, and Pink Floyd's another brick in the wall part two, uh, when Clara was ordering kids uh, to clean up the chessboard which um, is a reference to like, you know, the lyrics that, you know, we don't need no education, which is talking about rebellion yes. from school. So uh, I, I thought that was pretty cute. Uh, and the doctor, of course, is, and, a, is uh, a rebel. So that fits perfectly. With yes. Him. Go ahead. I also like the scene, the shot of showing the chessboard, uh, because, you know, we're talking about at times... Um, you know, the doctor treats people mm -hmm. as uh, chess pieces. Yeah. So I thought that was really well done. Yeah, it's a good metaphor. Yeah, very much so. Good. Um, so line of the episode? Uh, line of the episode was, now, I imagine you have many questions. Fire away. I won't answer any of them. I love that line. Um, as usual, <laughs> that was going to be my line. Oh, <laughs> So, uh, you can do the boyfriend uh, line. Yes. Um, so, um, um, so what I'm going to do is um, when she says um, she's talking to the parent, Claire is, and they're running off, and she's such a good teacher, she stops and says, um, handwriting could be better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I thought it was very, very good. And um, I did not write the exact wording, but um, when the doctor says, why do I keep you around? Uh, she says something along the lines of, because the alternate is for you to develop a conscious yes. of your own. Yeah. I thought that was another good line. That was a good line. And, 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 a, yes. and a great point from, great point in Clara's column, because, yeah. That, yes. The doctor, yeah. Doctor um, sometimes uses his companions as his conscience. Because he has them. yes, and then, like he said way back in deep breath, you know, like she, or no, into the Dalek where she, he's like, uh, you know, she cares because I, so I don't have to. Yes, absolutely. But uh, I also like the line, um, "You've made a boyfriend error." Yes, that was a really good line, <laughs> um, and uh, he um, he still loves bow ties. Yeah. He doesn't wear them, but he's still a fan of the bow tie. Well, it's it's part of who he is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, score rating. Um, now, I granted, I think my score is going to probably be higher than yours at this time, but for the first time ever, uh -oh, controversy. Um, yes. I gave it eight out of ten. Uh, vortex displacement devices. Very nice. I gave it seven out of ten. 
brushes. Oh, there you go. Uh, yes, um, still definitely a good score. Uh, if I was just going to do the Danny, Clara, and Doctor, I probably would have given it 9.5 mm-hmm. uh, because it was truly everything you could want in this kind of discussion. It just needed a good, uh, good threat menace. Really yes, make it, or, really make it at least, yeah, just a little bit more substance, but overall, yep. uh, really nice. Uh, so before we reverse the polarity, <laughs> I heard we got uh, some press this week. Yeah, um, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Romana One uh, from Doctor Who Columbus. I don't know if she's listening or if anybody else from Doctor Who Columbus is listening, but hopefully they are, um, especially since I'm like, you know, in your town so that might not be that bad of an idea but um just saying that uh you know she's um posted on her on her the official doctor who columbus blog that um for everybody to check out next stop everywhere so thank you so much um for giving us some love and, and giving the podcast love and uh we hope to be continue to be worthy of uh your recommendation so thank you very much romana yeah, that is absolutely just a thrill. Uh, I was uh, very happy to see that. Um, we did get, um, we had a wonderful discussion, you and Ken Schaefer did. Um, he did not get an email in time to discuss, but he sent, um, you know, we go to lunch once a week and we are sitting there and he talked about, he had a lot of problems with the barn. Right. In uh, the uh, listen episode, and did you like my response? You, uh, yes, I did. Do you want to give a little summary of that? Uh, let me see if I can. I don't have it in front of me, but I'm gonna wing it, and you can correct me where I need to be corrected. But um, okay, um, yeah, he, Ken had a problem or a concern. He's like, okay, there's this barn, and it's like you know the the war doctor goes out there in this barn uh, that supposedly he slept in as a child way back when um there used to be like a presumably there was a house nearby but now in the day of the doctor there's like no house there's like a, it's a whole wasteland uh surrounding it so he's like so what happened to the house right that was his question yeah yeah so um yeah and uh my and my response to that was Um, that, uh, you know, like, well, you know, we don't know exactly what happened between the doctor's childhood and the war doctor's, uh, time because, you know, something could have happened to the area. Like maybe it was under attack, especially during the time war. We don't know. And, um, maybe something happened where like the barn, the doctor was inside the barn and protected it with some form of force field. And while the area around got completely scorched and destroyed. So that was, that was my theory. I don't know if it's, you know, it's, it's just one of those little continuity gaps, but hopefully somebody at some point will be filled in. But if not, uh, that's my explanation for it. And it should be canon. Yeah. And the other <laughs> thing he brought up is that um, he didn't understand why Gallifrey still had barns. And I said, well, because you could have, um, you know, different horses, and it is, you brought up the fact that there could be different cultures, different Gallifrey, different cultures. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and if you look at, like, Earth, where there's, like, all these different cultures, you know, you've got African cultures, you've got uh, Chinese, you know, cultures, you know, you've got all Russian, you've got all kinds of different cultures, and, you know, rich people, poor people, what have you, that, you uh, you know, it's it stands to reason that Gallifrey, being such a you know big planet, probably has a lot of different cultures of its own. And then I also pointed out to Ken that um, the uh, classic Tom Baker episode, uh, "The Invasion of Time," uh, established that there was a, uh, a kind of like a tribe of Gallifreyans or or what have you that kind of broke off from Time Lord society. They rebelled against it and became like this kind of like more like back to basics, um, you know, almost like like Gallifrey's version of the Amish or something. I don't know. But uh, they they, you know, just kind of like stripped down low tech, you know, you know, they they had farms, they had animals and whatnot. So. Um, so, yeah, it's entirely possible that uh, that there's different cultures there and 
that's why not everybody has to be a Time Lord on Gallifrey. Absolutely. Um, the uh, So let's reverse the polarity. What's your <laughs> suggestion this time? Uh, my suggestion should be probably pretty obvious um, to anyone that watched The Caretaker. Any guesses on what my, my pick is? No, no. No? Oh, I stumped him. Good. Um, I thought... You know that uh, we go. We can go back um, to series two from 2006 for the episode "School Reunion" by Toby, yes. written by Toby Woodhouse, which surprise has features the Doctor going undercover at a school to investigate some something strange going on. So uh, yeah, I thought that was. I thought that, uh, and he's using the alias John Smith again so it yeah i think that worked well um something my wife pointed out to me as we were discussing this that i thought was a great observation so kudos Lori. um that in school reunion you had um rose and sarah jane smith kind of having a rivalry uh arguing over the doctor while in the caretaker you kind of had the reverse of that with the doctor and danny kind of having a rivalry over clara so it seems to me that, yeah, if, um, if you enjoyed The Caretaker, and I hope you did, um, you should definitely check out School Reunion if you haven't already, because it's pretty much up the same alley. Yeah, that's that's an excellent uh, suggestion, as they always are. <laughs> um, that also has the great line where um, you talked about Mickey, where Mickey's, mm-hmm. oh, your ex and, you know, and yes. your current talking, that can't be good for you. Your ex and the missus. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah. X of the misses. Yes, yep, misses, so very yeah, nice. The X, yep, yeah. That's, Good. It, that's like every guy's nightmare. So yeah, I thought I love that line from Mickey in in school reunion, and so this is, yeah, kind of the same thing with well, only from Clara's point that uh, yeah, it's it's her X and the the new misses. So mm-hmm. or Mister in, yes. in this regard. <laughs> so do you think that um, Danny is going to be in the TARDIS shortly? I don't know. I mean, he seems like he's not as eager to be on board, but I think at some point something's going to happen and then he's going to end up traveling with the doctor and Clara. I don't. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, Rory took a while to get on board. Um, but I think Danny's going to take a little longer. Uh, I guess maybe by the end of the season, um, that end of series eight that uh, I can see him becoming a full fledged companion uh, because I think Moffat really enjoys having two companions in the TARDIS with the doctor. Uh, that's why he had Amy and Rory. Yes. So essentially, you know, Clara and Danny would be the new Amy and Rory. And I think, uh, he, I think he can't resist the idea of two Coal Hill school teachers in the TARDIS again, after all those years since 1963 with William Hartnell, um, taking on, um, you know, like, uh, the companions, Ian Chesterton and Barbara Wright. So I think it's, it brings Dr. Who full circle again. I, I can't see Moffat resisting that at some point. He may put it off, but I think he's going to, I think it's going to pay off. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's going to happen pretty quick. Um, and, uh, I want to stress that even though, um, this isn't as my favorite episode, there were certainly some great things in it, and uh, as always, I love talking to it about it with you. Well, thank you. Yes. So, um, <laughs> I would hope so, so considering um, how many podcasts we've done. Yes, we are, we are doing it. there. Yes. Uh, so tonight's a little short uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, there was not as much, uh, a lot of character development, but not as much plot to discuss. And secondly, um, I am getting ready to watch, hopefully, the Dallas Cowboys um, <laughs> perform well against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, so, um, One thing, though. Should we mention that Missy made, finally made her return this episode? Oh, you know what? Um, it actually, yes, I am sorry I missed that. Aha. Um, I'm, yes, I'm, good catch. I'm keeping you honest. Yes, not only did we see her, and she was really busy, mm-hmm. but we met an underling. Doing Missy. Uh, he kind of gave them some different, you know, the police, uh, the policeman who yeah. had ended up dying earlier in the show, um, some choices 
They got to look up the window. I don't know what they saw, right. but um, it was really um, a nice little just kind of almost a add-on that was really cool. Yeah, I thought so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, what Missy's so busy that she can't, you know, deal with this guy because the other two people she met were apparently she could make time for. So I don't know what was different right. this time. Um, could be just because this was an indirect um, person who was indirectly killed as a result of the doctor's actions. Um, yeah, I don't know. Because I, um, cause one of the things I noticed in this episode was that they made a point of dis- mentioning the doctor's Artron energy um, yes. as the reason why this um, you know, this robot was attracted to this area. And obviously if, if you're kind of connecting the dots this season, um, that was because um, of all those repeated trips that the doctor has to make to Coal Hill School to drop Claire off because, you know, she's right. commuting in the TARDIS. So yeah, there's going to be some Artron energy there that, you know, because of all those repeated trips in the TARDIS. So indirectly the doctor's responsible for that that robot sh- you know the scovox showing up and uh and uh that's why he had to deal with it yeah um very interesting that he is in a lot of ways causing the issue himself mm-hmm. uh we won't blame him but that <laughs> is a little bit so good catch charles thank you um see not quite as short <laughs> this time no 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 there we go <laughs> a little less short. um Yes, um, we continue to uh, get nice um, ratings on iTunes. Thank you so much. We recently had someone that was wanting to listen to the podcast and asked us to uh, a way they could download their uh, MP3s directly, and we took care of that. Thank you, Rob. Uh, So that's good. Um, if you want to give us feedback, um, there are Twitter is at NextStopSMG. We also have a Gmail account, NextStopEverywhereSMG at gmail.com. I can be reached at JWJ170104. And we have a Facebook page, Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast. Please search of us and like it. We have not reached the 100 um likes yet we are on the very uh pg-13 rating of 69 <laughs> 69 dude. so we want to try to get to 100 and charles where can they find your fine work uh, uh with the new tv se- season your blog <laughs> is very busy yep um yeah the, my blog is damn good coffee and hot um recently i just did a review of the pilot episode for gotham and yes, I'm going to be doing reviews eventually of The Flash and Constantine when those de- debut. So uh, kind of be on the lookout for those. Um, but you can also follow me on Twitter, at Charles Skaggs, cleverly enough. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram, at Charles Skaggs again. And uh, also Google Plus uh, for the four of you that follow me on Google. Actually, there's probably, I think, 40 now of you on, on Google Plus. So well done. Um, always glad to get Google Plus followers. So, as for all the people that just can't stand Facebook and use F- Google Plus as a backup, so thanks everybody. And, uh, Good. Uh, yeah. So we'd love to hear from you. Give us your thoughts. Uh, tell me and Charles if you um, s- still agree that this is a uh, so far a good season. Uh, your thoughts on Danny, thoughts on the new doctor, or and theories on Missy. Um, so yeah, yeah, hit us up with questions. We, you know, yes, we'll do, absolutely. We'll do, we'll do our best to answer them, and if we don't know what we're talking about, we'll make something up. So, <laughs> absolutely, we are good at that. So for now, we're gonna say goodbye. We hope you guys have a great week, and keep hope alive. And remember, I sometimes think that military intelligence is a contradiction in terms. Well done. Third Doctor reference. Thank you very much, (laughs) sir. Uh, We will uh, talk to you guys next week. And uh, thanks. Bye. Bye. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com 
and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. <laughs> Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world. <laughs>